Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my YouTube channel The Teaching Show. Uh, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you find my videos useful and don't forget to hit the bell icon for more updates. So in this series of uh, video lectures, I am trying to develop a course on process calculation. In the last video, we had seen uh, what do you mean by free degree of freedom and how do you perform degree of freedom analysis. Uh, in this video, we will uh, deal with material balance involving more than one process unit and we will see how degree of freedom analysis comes handy while solving such problems. So let's start directly. Uh, here I am taking one model system. Okay, So I have uh, two units uh, together which I am considering right now. So th there is unit 1, unit 2 and there are so many uh, streams which are coming in so many streams which are going out okay so intuitively uh, what you will do is uh, or what one can think of doing is that combine these two units and treat them as one because till now you have learned to take material balance on single unit okay so you can do that okay so what i can do is uh, i can combine these two units and take material balance over this entire combined system this i will call as overall balance okay and whatever i am drawing over here this envelope okay and i am going to consider the streams which cross this envelope only so i have two streams which are going inside this envelope so these form my two input streams there are three streams which are going out okay so these are my three product streams i am not going to consider this stream which is going from unit 1 to unit 2 this is a process stream okay but this is not crossing my envelope why it is not crossing because i am combining unit 1 and unit 2 together and dealing it as one system so whatever give and take which is happening between unit 1 and unit 2 i am not bothered about it ultimately i am just combining these two and trying to analyze the system okay so process stream will not be considered for the overall system you have to take in take care you first draw an envelope which encompasses or encircles the entire units okay and then just count those streams which are crossing this envelope okay so that's how you are going to decide now this is your material balance on the overall system but i can equally well take material balance on either of the subsystems so what are the subsystems over here like unit 1 and unit 2 okay so i can take a material balance on unit 1 for this i have again drawn an envelope and then i will just count those streams which cross this envelope so this is the input stream it is crossing this envelope and how many product streams i have this one and this is also leaving the system so there are two product streams i can also take material balance on unit 2 over here i have one inlet stream which is now the process stream and i have two product streams okay now in unit 1 and unit 2 your composition and flow rates and everything is changing right and if you look closely even your composition and your flow rate is changing when this input stream mixes with this process stream okay so you can also you know uh, take this mixing point also as a subsystem okay and you can also write balance equations across this mixing point so i have i can define three uh, subsystems in this problem unit 1 unit 2 and this mixing point in general you can uh, take material balance across any mixing point or splitting point okay so these are the three subunits now let's uh, dive more into this problem i will put some figures to these uh, streams and then we will try to calculate the remaining streams so let's do that now i am specifying uh, the two in inlet feed streams okay so they are completely specified and i am going to specify two product streams what is left is that the stream which is coming out of unit one then after mixing what is the composition of this process stream which is going to unit two and then this third product stream so i don't know the composition basically of these three streams fine now let's decide uh, how do we want to solve this problem because you have done only material balance 
on single unit so you might think that okay i will first take material balance on unit one solve it and then i will go and solve my mixing point then i will go and solve my unit two there is no harm in doing it uh, in fact most of the um, software packages which you get for uh, material and energy balance like your s pen they are sequential solver what they do is that they start from one point take one unit solve it whatever is the outlet it forms the input stream to the second unit then it goes and solves the second unit whatever is the product stream uh, values which you get they form the input to the third unit and so on okay so s pen does the same way it is a sequential solver so let's try first that approach okay so what i'm going to do is in order to solve this problem i will take material balance on unit one first so i'm just drawing this subsystem separately i have an inlet field stream one product stream uh, second product stream i don't know let's um, see so i am just following what we were doing my basis is 100 kg of feed i have drawn a fully labeled flow chart next i will do degree of freedom analysis number of unknowns are 2 m.5 and xa5 number of equations you have two components so you can write two independent equations so my degree of freedom is zero i can quickly solve these two equations so i'm taking one overall balance and one component balance and finding out the value of m.5 and xa5 okay so after solving unit one what i will do is i will go and solve now the mixing point okay so these values i had calculated by solving unit one so now this these this feed stream now it forms a feed to this mixing point okay so i have now basis at 60 kg per hour of inlet this is another feed stream i know the values of these two again let's do degree of freedom analysis number of unknowns 2 m.6 and xa6 how many equations you have independent equations again two because two component system okay so degree of freedom is zero i can again take one overall balance and one component balance and solve these two to calculate m.6 and xa6 simple so now i have got this process tree before mixing and after mixing i have all these values now i will go and solve unit 2 so now whatever the after the mixing point the stream which is coming it forms the feed to the unit 2 so that is 90 kg per hour of feed we have calculated it in the last slide i have two product streams one of the product stream is specified the remaining product stream you have to find out how many number of unknowns are there two m.7 and xa7 how many equations you have again two so degree of freedom is zero you can again solve this block and calculate the values of the unknowns so i'm taking again an overall balance and the component balance on a and calculate the remaining two values okay so let's summarize what we have done so i had this system where i was asked to calculate what was the uh, stream from which was coming from unit one before mixing what happens to it after the mixing point and what is the third product stream so what i did was i took balance on unit one calculated this process stream i got the values then at this mixing point this process stream it got mixed with the incoming feed and then i saw this mixing point i did took material balance on this mixing point and calculated whatever this process stream which is going to the unit 2 so i got these values then again i went ahead and took material balance on unit 2 and calculated the final product stream so in this way my flow of information is from unit 1 to mixing point to unit 2 okay now what i will do is i will change the problem slightly okay so instead of giving this product stream i am just saying that this is unknown and i have this product stream okay which we calculated in the last problem so now i'm just changing what are the knowns so these two product streams are known are known and i want to calculate now what are the composition and flow rate of this product stream okay so let's start sequentially solving it so i will take material balance on unit one 
Uh, if I take material balance, first of all I have to do what? A degree of freedom analysis. How many unknowns are there? M3 dot, XA3, M dot 5, XA5. So there are four unknowns. How many equations you have? Two. So your degree of freedom is two. So the problem is under specified and I can't start calculations from unit one. Next, let's go and check what happens at the mixing point. So again, uh, let's do degree of freedom analysis. I have number of unknowns, 4, m.6, xa6 and m.5, xa5. So number of equations are 2. So my degree of freedom is again 2. So again, the problem is under specified and I can't start calculations from the mixing point. Let's go and check unit 2. Over here, I have how many unknowns? There are just two unknowns, m.6 and xa6. I have two equations. My degree of freedom comes out to be zero. So problem can be solved. Okay. So uh, now what I will do is I will start my calculations from unit two because here the degree of freedom is zero. So always remember, you have to check the degree of freedom of each of the subsystem and of the entire system and find out where the degree of freedom is zero. Wherever your you find your degree of freedom zero, from there you start your calculations. So now for this changed problem, I will start my calculations from unit two. It's very simple, we have done it already in the last example. So I will take one overall balance and one component balance and quickly calculate my m.6 and xa6. Once I get these values, I will again revisit my material balance on mixing point. Now this uh, stream has been calculated in the last slide. Now I again check my degree of freedom at the mixing point. Since now m.6 and xa6 have been calculated. So in light of this, I again calculate my uh, degree of freedom. Number of unknowns now uh, at mixing point have been reduced to 2. They are only m.5 and xa5. Number of equations I can write is 2. So degree of freedom is 0. I can solve at the mixing point and get the values of m.5 and xa5. Once I have calculated these values, then I will again revisit my material balance on unit 1. Now m.5 and xa5 are known from the uh, material balance on mixing point. So if I again calculate my degree of freedom at unit 1, I have only two unknowns m.3 and xa3. I have two independent equations. So degree of freedom is 0. I can solve this block and calculate my values of the two unknowns. Okay. So in this way, again I have solved the problem. Now how my information is flowing? See, I have solved my unit 1 first, calculated this process stream after mixing. Okay, so this is my mixing point. What I'm seeing, what I'm doing now, I'm taking a material balance on the mixing point and trying to find out what are the conditions before the mixing point. Okay, then uh, this forms again an uh, input to this unit 1 and then I calculate the remaining stream. So my information is flowing now from unit 2 to mixing point to unit 1. Okay, so in this way I have solved my problem. So always remember you have to check the degree of freedom. If it comes out to be 0 then start your calculations from that point. Okay, I can have done this problem in several different ways. Okay, what I could have done was I could have calculated this value. Then if I take an overall balance, you check it for yourself. Pause this slide for some moment and then see uh, if you take an overall balance right now, again you will have two unknowns and there will be two equations so you can find this tree. Okay, then I can solve unit 1 and I can have the value of this process tree. So I can go in any order. See for example, I can take first my overall balance, then I can go and solve my unit 1 and then I can go and solve my mixing point or my unit 2 to get this value. Okay. So the thing is that always remember that start your calculations wherever your degree of freedom is 0. Then you will obtain values of some of the unknown variables. Count that also now as known and then go and check again uh, your degree of freedom uh, at different points. Wherever it becomes 0, then solve at that point. Okay, so you have to keep on doing that and solving it. That simplifies a problem uh, to a very great extent. Uh, so thanks for watching this video. Uh, in next video, I will be posting two problems 
which are unsolved problems of Hemel Blau. So uh, please look forward to it. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Thank you very much.